So today I'm going to take a tour of our Romit 3 mission as we are thinking about it right now. And to help me I have some wonderful drawings by, made by one of the members of the teams. So, the Romit 3 mission starts by us being inside a rocket. A rocket where we will buy ourselves a ticket on board to go into space. The rocket of course will depart and go up, up, up towards the stars and as you can see on the next picture it will actually have more than one uh, part of the rocket so this is the second stage. Uh, whether it has two or three is not really known yet for us. And then you have the top of the rocket inside where you have it all covered by the so-called space fairing. And inside there you can have various things uh, in the rocket and one of them is a little box which will be the box where we are inside. You can see us here and you can see that we are thinking about being a 4 uh, unit CubeSat for our Romit uh, 3 mission. Now when we get there the box will open, we have a, a little uh, spring operated at the end and out comes the uh, the Romit 3 spacecraft in itself. We are thinking about uh, solar panels that unfolds, so inside the box they are folded and when they come out they fold out to something looking approximately like this uh, in order to have energy and power enough on board to do what needs to be done. In the beginning we expect to be tumbling through space in fairly uh, low Earth orbit. Um, how low we don't know yet. Uh, we are also having some discussions that it would be a great advantage to get all the way to geotransfer orbit uh, and that will come uh, as a following of the next discussions. Anyway, the first thing to do is really to get our attitude under control so that we continue in a um, clear uh, and well-defined orbit with a well-defined attitude around Earth. At which time we will actually start up our ion engine and see to go in the direction of the Moon. They because the ion engine is rather a uh, weak uh, engine, it needs a significant number of turns around the Earth, making each ellipse a little bit more elongated, until in principle we get all the way out to be able to go close to the Moon. Now here, when we get fairly close to the Moon, and on the right trajectory, we will actually separate out so that we will have two boxes of approximately the same size connected with a string. And that um, string and two um, bits right now we will put into, um, into rotation using the iron engine again to do that. So that in the end we end up with a rotating uh, um, uh, spacecraft with two parts. Now comes the most risky part and the most difficult part as well. That in the rotation we have here, it will move forward like that. And at the same time the moon will come in the same direction because the moon is circulating around Earth like that. If we get everything right, there will be a time where the relative speed between this um, little box and the moon surface is actually fairly low, while the relative speed of the uh, upper parts of our spacecraft will be very high. Uh, in short, what we do is that we are transferring uh, kinetic energy between our two parts uh, connected with the string. And with the aim that when the kinetic energy is low and in the same uh, vector diagram as the moon's movement, we actually are able to 
have a low velocity between this bit and the moon's surface and therefore we cut the string and we should be able to get down if we have luck and everything works nicely um, with uh, a low kinetic energy on this part. We will then unfold our, um, our uh, wheels, which looks right now to be wire, wire mesh wheels, that's how it looks, and from it three will fall to the surface from whatever height uh, it had uh, when, when we cut the string uh, in a relative controlled fashion. The wheels may be slightly bit bigger than on this, uh, on this part, uh, but that is to uh, details to be seen later on. So, then we arrive on the surface and here you see our little one kilogram, uh, one and a half maybe, one cube CubeSat uh, with a set of uh, wheels uh, around it that can start its direction on the moon. If we look at it from the top, because it has only two wheels, it will have to move one wheel first and then stop and then move another wheel. So we are expected to get something in the tracks that looks like this. If we try to run both wheels at the same time, we may just uh, turn our, um, our CubeSat round and move, don't move the wheels at all. Otherwise we might need a tail uh, to give some uh, friction on the surface and make sure we don't rotate. But for now, the plan is simply to move one at a time. Then we will have the little camera built in and it will be able to take a picture, uh, pictures and film as it's supposed to. And the radio, uh, which will be situated on the top um, of the craft. And at that time, the direction, if we have landed in the right face of the moon, the direction up from our uh, spacecraft will be in direction of the Earth where we can have a big antenna to listen to the very weak radio. So this is the plan for Romit 3.